Let's talk about it. Here at Nate's Table Talk, uh, there is an inbox question that came in, and the question is, is prayer reaching out to God, or is it reaching out to oneself? Or is it reaching out to someone else? And here today we have a guest, uh, Wayne Williams III, who's joining in with us just to chop it up on this matter about prayer and what prayer is. Uh, we're going to uh, let begin with uh, Wayne Williams. He's going to share his view, uh, how his thought on what prayer is, when one is praying, who, it, who they are praying to. Then Mason will share, and we're just going to chop it up. And uh, we thank you all for uh, tuning in, listening in to this table talk here today. Wayne, you can open up and you can share with us your thoughts on when one pray, uh, whether it's you yourself or whether it's somebody you know that's praying, what's really taking place, what's going on. Now, before you go in, uh, before you say that, let me say this here. I do, me personally, I think that when we talk about prayer, prayer is something that's spiritual. And one who's not in tune to spirituality, um, then it's difficult for them to even consider prayer at all. That's just, I just want to put that out there first to give y'all some thought, insight, which way, what you want to say. All right, wait, go ahead and say something to us okay. today. All right, thank you for having me, both of y'all. I appreciate like, the opportunity to be here. Um, so, in my opinion, I am of the, the people that believe that prayer is mostly um, self-affirmation. Um, there's a few different sorts of prayer. I feel like each sort of prayer is a different level of self-affirmation. Even in accessory prayer, if you pray with somebody else, you're really only praying for their comfort. Like you're only praying to make them happy. Like like you're not your prayer's not gonna change the future. Your prayer's not gonna change what God has already said. Um I don't think you can petition God to change his what he's gonna do. So um like, if you're going to die today, you're going to die today. If I pray for you, all I want, you're going to die. So, there's no need to even pray for stuff like that. Because you're not going to change what God already has said. Unless you can change God's opinion. And if you can, then, I mean, we got a lot of God in us. And we have a lot of power to change. But we want and less for God. So, prayer, for instance, if I'm going through an issue... Right. If I'm about to face a heart, if I'm about to go to a job interview or something like that, right, before I go, I might pray and say, God, give me the strength to say the right things. And I need this. Let me let me, let me get through it. Okay. Right. And let's say I go there and I do good. Right. I stay sharp. I stay focused. I answer my questions correctly. I get the job. I'm going to thank God and say, oh, God, thank you for giving me all that strength to, and all the right things to say. When really it was just me, like I answered those questions and they liked what I what I said and they hired me. So you you feel like it would say that's just you and that God had nothing in that doing that. God had nothing in, in a lot of stuff that we think has something to do with it because there's there's no room for it. Like another thing that I, that really, another important factor that I think that way is because a lot of adversaries believe in the same God. Therefore, if for instance, you pray that I'll, I'll start like this. I'll just start. This is where this is where this came from. This is where my belief started with this. When I was in the military, my mother-in-law, God bless her, said a prayer for me before I left to go to war. And she said something along the lines of, "You know, God, keep him protected from the enemies, and may the enemies be defeated, and all that kind of stuff." Right? And that's cool. But I'm sure it was another little soldier. Mom was saying the same thing to him, to the same God. Like, protect my son out there and bring him home and defeat the enemy. Well, I can be, I'm the enemy and, and the friend. That's why I'm saying, like, God don't get involved in most stuff. God don't get involved in sports. God don't get involved in a lot of stuff because it's too much room. If I'm praying for the job and you praying for the job, I'm going to get it and somebody not. And somebody's still going to, we all going to keep praising God. We all going to keep, like, there's... You see what I'm saying? Like, there's no accountability I no matter you. what happens. 
Life is going to happen, no matter if you pray, if you don't pray. First, I want to, let me say this here. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm glad you came in and sharing and being a guest here and sharing with us and sharing uh, your story, your, your heart, right. what, what you what you think. That's what it is. We just chop it up. Mason, you want to come in on any of that? that? Um, <clears throat> the question that I would ask is that if one, uh, as we were talking earlier, if you don't, an absolute, dealing with an absolute truth, I, I hear you say that, and you said at the beginning that this is your opinion, mm -hmm. okay? Right. Just because we harbor an opinion uh, with some type of philosophical implications that formulate uh, an ideology doesn't make it a truth or a fact. I agree. You agree with that? I do agree. Okay. So, to me, this Word of God, the Bible, is my absolute truth. Okay? Right. So, my whole being is, in the way that I think it's structured, due to the fact that what the scripture reads, okay? Okay. So, my question to you is, do you believe the Bible's the inerrant word of God? Not the Bible that we, the King James and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but the the Hebraic and the Greek text that this is translated from. That's one question. I just, do you believe that first? No. Okay. And the reason, let me tell you the reason why I said no, because it took a lot of me to say no. And the reason I say no is because, like you mentioned, that's your absolute truth. You believe in that wholeheartedly for whatever reason you was, your experience led you to believe that. That's why you believe that. On, a, on, a, on the same token, my experience that led me to believe otherwise. So, I respect your absolute truth, but your absolute truth is just your opinion, in my opinion. I mean, like, you, like I have mine, you have yours, and yours are based off that. Mine is based off what I believe and what I've seen with my own self. Okay, so you're, a little bit of that too. I was raised with that. A little bit of that too. Okay, so if if I, because what I'm what I'm attempting to do is find a common ground by which we can travel down to where we can come to some understanding about some of the things in which you said. Okay, because my perception is going to lead down a different pathway when you said God is not in this or that or this. He he doesn't have time for that. There's no room for that. Right. 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 Okay. Well, I'll ask you a question. Who makes your heart beat? Who makes my heart beat? Yeah. You? You do? I don't think anyone makes my heart beat. Okay. So it so it's outside of your realm of your existence then? My, my your heart, power. My yeah. heart beat is outside of my path. My heart stopped beating. Nothing I can do about it. Okay. So it's outside of your power. We'll concur with that, right? We'll concur with that, yes. So there is something that is causing that heart to go boom, boom, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So... If we go to the medical field and we run and we do an EKG, electrocardiogram, right? Right. An electrocardiogram is going to run the electrical pulses to find out the manner of the contracting of that of the heart, right? Correct. You with me? I'm with you. They're going to hook you up with 10 probes. You with me? I'm with you. All right. So when they do that, there is something that they are measuring. They are measuring the electrical pulse of your body. Right. You with me? I'm with you. All right. So next, so the electrical pulse, you got... Neutrons, electrons, protons, neutrons, you with me? Right. So when we look at that over there, that's light, isn't it? Yeah. So light is com uh, composed of what? Protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? Correct. Positive and, and negative, right? Right. All right. So if that's composed of that, my Bible tells me in John, 1 John chapter 5, I mean, excuse me, 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, that God is light. Okay? Like that light? Watch me. Okay. I'm going somewhere. I'll follow you. Now, in 1 John chapter 1, he says, He lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, lighting up, remember, I'm dealing with what controls your heartbeat, right? Okay. So now, whenever we look that all things that were made were made by him, and nothing that was made was made without him, according to the word of God. According to the word of God. Okay, so, that, so far... You are agreeing with everything that I'm saying, right? I'm agreeing with what you put up so far, right? Okay, I'm so, following you. all right, so if you're following me, remember what I said they're coming from, they're coming from this. Right. All right, so next. Next thing that I'm going to say is that in John chapter 8, verse 12, the Bible says that uh, he who follows me uh, doesn't walk in darkness but has the light of life, okay? Now, watch where I'm going. Okay. A lot of the times through our experiences, we negate the fact 
that God is in everything. Just because God doesn't work a circumstance out favorable in your instance, in Doc's instance, in my instance, God is sovereign. He does whatever he wants to because he's God. So while we praying to him, if he's going to do what he wanted to do. All right, you ready? I'm ready. The Bible tells us that man shall pray without ceasing. Prayer is a form of communication. We're not big. We're not like, look. We, should we, let's say spiritual yeah, communication. It's spiritual communication. Yeah. Yeah. We're not big and go, oh, Lord, I need for you to. A lot of times we are. That's immaturity. A lot of times we do. Follow me. Okay. Okay. That's immaturity. Right. And if that's been your experience, watching people do that in times like that, you we don't know what they may be going through and why they're calling upon them. Right. But normally during times of crisis, when their back is broke and bent over, mm -hmm. who the first one they're going to call on? Okay. okay. So with that common understanding, let's move, let's transcend our, our thinking okay. for a minute. So if the absolute truth we have to deal with, okay? But we, let, me, let me, if I may, we haven't dealt with the absolute truth. We only dealt with your absolute truth. I'm going to get to it. Okay. All right. All right. So, when we deal with conscience, okay, okay, in the realm of conscience, how is conscience considered uh, in this existence? It has no place in the physical world. Conscience doesn't. Conscience can't have any place in the physical world because in a person's conscience, there derives a way that they some things that they think, some things that are manifested, but it's not in the physical world. So it's not a tangible thing. So if it's not a tangible thing and we're dealing with measures of conscience, then what exactly is a person's conscience? There has been scientists from the time from the 1960s to the 1950s that have not even been able to come up with an idea or an ideological perception or perspective to even come up with the right understanding about human conscience. So if we're looking at the point of human conscience, how in the world do we explain human conscience if the absolute truth is not derived from scripture. Human conscience, like any other human intelligent element, is based off your experiences, based off you understanding certain subjects, matters, math, senses, you know what I mean? Like, if you smell smoke, you're going to notice a fire. But it's not, not because, conscience. It, it's not conscience? No, what is not that? at all. Uh, if, if I smell smoke, I've been a kid, and I done burned some stuff up. Right, so you know. So through experience, right. I know what smoke about. smells like. Right. That ain't got nothing to do with my conscience. So so tell me, what, what does it do with your conscience? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Okay. When we're dealing with conscience from a perspective of absolute truth, remember, I talked to you about mathematics. Yeah. Mathematics is a quick way to find, because there's absolutes dealing with mathematics. Right, you can prove it. Right, you can prove it. So... What about that that you can't prove? Like what? Conscience. We don't even know what it is still. Like you haven't told me and haven't told you. Okay. So, so why should you still don't know what it is? Okay. So if I can't prove what conscience is, and you can't prove to me, your explanation that you gave to me with conscience, I can't ride with that mm -hmm. one because experience trumps that. So if we both can't prove what conscience is, then we would automatically from the intellectual perspective of all scholarly people, mm -hmm. they call that the God factor. Unexplainable events that cannot be scientifically proven. Let's go to the book. Let's go to the dictionary. Let's just see what the word conscience means and then go from there. So that way they can give a better explanation to me what it <laughs> what, means. What conscience is? What, yeah. Well, Let's if, you, if, you, if you want... If so you're going by books. <laughs> But we, the time is not going to allow yeah, we us can't to go get, into the the dictionary now. Do I? I mean, I mean, if we speak, I mean, if we're going to speak English, we have to speak the same language. If we're not, we, if we lost in translation, we need to clear that up because we don't know what consciousness is here. So y'all try to okay, all right. So y'all want a dictionary so that we can find so we can out speak the same language. What conscious is? Right. What Webster says conscious is. Right. Anyone have their cell phone with you? Can pull up on your dictionary. You have your cell phone. I left mine over there. Let's see. While uh, while you while you're picking while you <laughs> looking up the word conscious there, and uh, so we will know what Webster says it is. Um, I still say that I think prayer is to know, and I say know 
that knowing is also believing what you believe um, to the one whom you're speaking to you believe that it is God right and that's what like that's, this whole thing is always um, going to be based off of um, that and not not about it's not about the form of prayer you know a lot of people want to say well the form of prayer but it's not really about the form of prayer it's uh, what you believe what you know about God uh, and it's a spiritual uh, communication spiritual you engaged in uh, a dialogue with an individual that you believe who is God right that's what I and I agree with that as well we got it shall I all right conscious adjective aware and responding to one's surroundings aware awake compost mentis alert responses reactive having knowledge of something I can agree with that yeah so, so now I know what conscious is okay so all right so with with that understanding when I'm dealing with conscious mm -hmm. that part of a person in their accord I'll go with Webster mm -hmm. I won't break it down in the Greek but I'll go with Webster and if we look at that from that perspective what's inside of a person's uh, mind like I know you've had this happen driving down the road and all of a sudden something tells you don't go that way and you're like well and you don't go that way mm -hmm. but you go somewhere else and later on you find out that if you would have went down there it was all bad right okay you've had that happen before right right okay so you were God who I call God mm -hmm. made you aware that if you went down that road, you need to go straight because there's something that's not good, but you had to obey that part that wasn't physical, that hadn't yet manifested itself, but it propelled you to move. Okay. Okay? You True. with me? Yeah, I'm with you. All right, absolutely. With the absolute right there, right? Well, with the Webster. We yeah, went with Webster, yeah, we, okay? We saw the word, right? Okay, so if that be the case then, that's why I was saying at the beginning that sometimes we can't make our experiences, whether they be bad or good, that we have with God to nullify the fact that God is in everything. Now, depending on levels of maturity, and we're dealing with prayer, mm -hmm. okay, whenever an individual prays to God, and I'm going to give you Bible, okay. okay, Hezekiah, he got told by Isaiah, you're going to die today. Go get your house in order. Right. That was getting ready to, that, that was happening. He turned to the wall and began, I don't, I don't know what kind of prayer it was, but he began to get down in prayer. And when he did, before Isaiah got outside of the city, the word of the Lord fell on Isaiah to tell him to come back to Hezekiah and tell Hezekiah, you got some more time to live. You got 15 more years. He averted death at that particular time. Let me give you another example. Now, now, we let him know this. That is what we call the sovereignty of God. God yes, does, does what, what He wants to. to do. That's what I'm basing my my opinion on too. So, if God does what He wants to, why pray? Why am I challenging Him? Okay, well, why it's not I, challenging. I, why am I trying to change Him? If you're not changing. Trying, so, what am I doing? Guess what you're doing? What? You're it's letting God know. For what? It's not no, going to no, change. No, no, watch this. Okay, you're letting God know that you're trusting in Him. Regardless. Regardless of the situation. But, in any case, if in fact, if he chooses, because from the sovereignty point, he can change that. You know, I showed you a picture of my cousin John, right? Yeah, you showed me. Man, I love him. Mm -hmm. Love him to death. You remind me so much of him. We're really, really close. John died. Drug overdose. Mm -hmm. All right? If I would have known what I know now, I would have been praying to intercede because I had no idea that he was that far gone to the left. Right. There's been many a people who I've prayed for, being a preacher, right. that God has called, checked them out of here. Right. But guess what? What? Let me tell you about Brother Hunter. Brother Hunter dropped dead in the hall, right in there. Mm -hmm. For four months, he's been in the hospital. He goes home on Monday. He had more tubes sticking in and out of him than I've ever seen any human being. Right. He was on the brink of death not one time, not two times, but all the time. His wife, 
prayed the church, prayed everybody, prayed. Have they not prayed? You think they will live? Uh, look here, I can just tell you what has happened. Yeah, you what about people that didn't have that didn't right. happen with though? Goes, now, goes now, back to Saul. You gotta understand. That's, that's, you gotta got go back to understand back to one. that there are times people you can pray uh, for an individual uh, who is sick and that they may live, they may come out of their sickness, it still is predicated upon God. God is the one. He's sovereign. He's the one that either allows this person to continue to exist or he answers that prayer. That's what I do understand. You do? That's now, what I do okay, understand. Uh, the, the thing that we have to understand is that God does what he wants to. Okay. Then, the, then a lot of times sickness is the healing comes from the the leaving or the departing of the earth from the earth for the dead person for the right, right. yeah but then the living we have to understand we all are going to die i get that and so we don't know how we don't know when right that's all predicated upon the sovereignty the of sovereignty God. let me of God. if i can if i can respectfully inflict i mean um you say what's on your mind thank you Sovereignty of God, get it. He's gonna do what he wants to do. Um, he's gonna take what he wants to take. He's gonna live who he wants to live. He'll let live who he wants to live. He's gonna tell. He's gonna warn some people of danger. He's not gonna warn others. Some people are gonna have a hard time, and some people aren't. Um, I don't think it's really necessarily God that's choosing this stuff. I think it's more the individual. I think a lot of stuff is uh, individual-based decision, like sickness. Like your cousin's death, like that was that was his thing. You know what I mean? That was your cousin's thing. You could have prayed for him all you want. That drug was harder than that prayer. You know what I mean? I didn't get a chance to pray. Somebody did. I don't. Somebody know. prayed for him. You think your prayer was good enough to say? Watch this. And to me, remember what I said back then. If I knew what I knew now, I didn't know back then what I knew now. What you know now? But what? Yeah, what I know now. I wasn't in a relationship with Jesus then when he died. So you could have saved him. Watch this. I know God. Could have. But he didn't. He could have did it without you. Well, and he didn't. Just hear me. I would have loved the opportunity to go on bending knee to pray to God for that situation. You can still do right. it now. Well, no, he's gone and but, that's a wrap. But God is still here. He's still, he's still involved in everything. Just go ahead and break now. Okay. I know but, he's still involved. But one who's gone, you can't go to them. You, They can't come back to you, but you can go to them because we're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're all gonna die, like everybody else that and, died and the, before us. The, the uh, but now also the prayer, the one who is one who is praying, it helps that individual as well. And that's what I agree with. It strengthens self that individual. It's self affirmation, and I can get that to you as well. If I love you, and I can be like, bro, if you sick and, and you my man, like you my friend, I'm gonna really. Like you gonna like, but what, you know what that does for me? It make you feel good. You know no, you love. No, no, no. Don't make me feel good. What it do? I know something about you now. What it mean? But what you? What do you know? Okay, watch. When you do that for me, now I know what's up with this pertaining to us. Right. Okay. Now I know. I don't have to think about it. Right. I don't have to speculate. Right. Because of your action, right? Because you're there, I know. That's what right. I'm talking about. All right. So watch me here. Remember what I said. Sometimes we experience things, and whatever we experience, whether they be positive or negative, sometimes sways how we believe and how our perception is formulated. Okay. I agree. All right. Sometimes we can hang out in the wrong environment. Mm -hmm. And get the wrong information. The Bible says faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now that's how faith come by hearing. And if you have faith in the word of God. Then you're hearing things pertaining to the word of God. But you can also hear other things that are not of God. That you put your faith in. It's the same same thing. That's your ear gate. And you got an eye gate. So in the whole crux of it all. Crux. Mm -hmm. Latin word <laughs> crucial. Right. The whole crucial point of all of it is this. God, you ready? Mm -hmm. You see this Bible? Yep. 
God is not relegated to 2,000 pages. This is God's love letter to us. Okay? This is his redemptive story and how he, by truth and the experience of humanity, went off the chart to save humanity and what the expected end. That's just a quick just of it. It gives all kind of things. But here's one thing about this. When we talked about God working inside and doing these types of things with, with, with science and hanging, he gives us a glimpse of certain things. Okay. But he doesn't give us the totality of the glimpse. But he lets us know, I'm in everything. And he is in everything. And so our part... I think we, too, we have to put in also that one cannot believe or know even God or in prayer or any of that unless there is a divine enablement for that individual. There has to be a person who is drawn by God first yeah. because if not, then... They have no spirituality. They'll be to frustrated all the time. Yes. Which, let me ask you this. Which, like, which comes first? Like, in this whole scheme of faith, belief, prayer. So first, you're told about God. You got to believe it. Then you, then you believe it. Then you buy into the story. You believe it. Then you start talking to him. You start praying to him. Right? And then after you pray to him, you said you had a dialogue with him. And then after you had a dialogue, then you, that makes you more and more engaged. I think there's there's so many aspects to that because when you are when you are a a a disciple you have to be discipled into um, uh, the Word of God. You're discipled into Christianity. You're uh, the Word Does of God. Does that mean like ushered into? Like no, you're no. taught. You just taught, just like you learn. Define what disciple is to himself. Yes. Disciple it's a learner. is a learner. It's a learner. A learner. It's just a like student. just yeah. it's Just exactly. like you learn. Um, Mathematics, right? Same thing. And after you learn it, you begin to have more knowledgeable of it. You are able to do fractions. You're able to, you know, uh, use it on your own. You know how to cipher. You know how to add and count. Right. Same way with the Word of God. You begin to understand it. Then you begin to grow in it. You begin. Then you be begin to believe it, but there has to be a drawing from God first. There has to be something that enable you to accept. Like what? Like your parents? No. That's how I learned no. about it. No. Um, no, he's no, talking no. about what the, the enablement means that you have a moment of clarity to where you see and you understand the what God is putting before you. You become enlightened to You're it. You're enlightened to it. And only God can enable an individual to that. Like, you, we can read the Bible as a book. Right. But there are some mysteries that you just won't get until he opens your eyes up and you look. Because there's things in the Bible that just reads in our English language that they don't mean what they say right there. Right. And most of the time, yeah. from, not, I won't say most of the time, but there are times when people, are, they teach, they teach, uh, principles of God's word instead of the word of God going into the syntax going into stand with the context and content of the that it may be give clarity because I believe that the word of God is there is giving clarity and understanding with the word of God then that's one who becomes a learner will become converted but I want to say this here uh, lastly this may have to be a second part to this here uh, we we're glad for you 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 guys to 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 watch and, and tuned in. I've enjoyed this. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you can take some takeaways from that that will help you in days to come and in your prayer life. I will say I suggest pray and ask God because again, as Reverend Mason said, and as the Word of God says, Paul says, pray without ceasing, and it happens after prayer. Until next table talk, we'll see you then. God bless you. God bless you.